At the height of solar max, as many as six CMEs are discharged by the sun every day. Ground-based telescopes like Big Bear Solar Observatory are ever on the watch. Boasting one of the largest solar telescopes in the world, Big Bear is one of our best early warning systems, alerting us to the magnetic forces thought to trigger a solar blast. Detecting a coronal mass ejection aimed at Earth is difficult. An even greater challenge is predicting a CME. Researchers are learning to read the telltale signs of a coming eruption, from changes in the magnetic activity of sunspots. But from the ground, we can only watch the sun during daylight hours, and even then, only when not covered by clouds. To watch for solar danger around the clock, the place to be is space. Five, four, three, two. One ignition and lift off of SOHO and the Atlas vehicle on an international mission of solar physics. Launched in 1995, SOHO is the only spacecraft that can monitor our star 24 hours a day. collaboration between the European Space Agency and NASA, SOHO views our sun in both visible and ultraviolet light. Okay, so run this one until 1800. Mm -hmm. Then after 1800, switch to the wind. Yeah. As I understand it, the reason why... A stream of data and images is beamed down to the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. Space weather has become a global concern. It's caused by the optics and trace. Rainer, has the flare shown the same? The SOHO spacecraft is basically our eyes on the sun. It focuses constantly on the sun, 24 hours a day, taking images. The reason that that's important for us is if you go away and you come back again, you've missed so much because things are happening all of the time. So it's very important that we keep looking at it constantly. SOHO orbits at the point where the gravity of Earth and Sun are balanced. And this is a million miles out. Now the Sun's 93 million miles away, so it's not that much closer to the Sun than we are. And that puts it outside of the influence of the Earth's magnetic field and everything else associated with the Earth. So we're getting a real clean, uninterrupted, 24-hour-a-day view of the sun. It makes movies. What we're seeing is things happen on the sun. We're seeing the activity, the dynamics. And I think that's the biggest breakthrough. That's the big, new, exciting thing about Soho is that you're seeing the thing fly. And it's exciting. It's really exciting. With a dozen sophisticated telescopes and instruments, SOHO serves two purposes. One is to probe the physics and structure of the sun. The other is to watch for signs of danger. How might the next huge solar blast play out? While we go about our lives unaware, a searing blast of particles could erupt off the sun into space. Hey, Barb. Yeah? The first to see the event would be researchers at SOHO Mission Control. It's a big one. Yeah, it's, it's a full 360-degree eruption. That's, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, look SOHO look literally like can't tell if the blast is coming or going. Okay, so heading directly toward or away from Earth. Going away. Nearly five billion tons of solar matter races through space, dwarfing Mercury. We've got a pretty good chunk going to the south and some, some east and some west here. So let's go look at the EIT data. Great. And see. All right. What you got? 
It's really a big event on the front side. There's a big flare here, which triggers lots of activities here, and I think mm -hmm. you can see something moving out from the sun. At a speed of one million miles an hour, it reaches Venus two and a half days after leaving the sun. Big Bear's instruments detect a magnetic disruption on the sun's face. Okay, Big Bear saw it as well. The SOHO team still doesn't know if the blast is coming toward Earth. They must wait to see if the spacecraft itself is struck. Any idea how fast it's going yet? There it is. We got a CME coming at us. Definitely Earth directed. No uncertainty remains. The blast has hit Soho and is on its way so to Earth. It's going to be less than an hour before it gets here. I should really call the polar team okay, to tell yeah. them. So you think you should put out an alert? Thanks. Only a one-hour warning goes out to defense, satellite operators, airlines, those tapped into the system. But most people would be completely unaware of the solar hurricane bearing down upon them. communication satellite is hit. Although its orbit doesn't change, it's suddenly left outside the Earth's magnetic field. Spinning in place, it loses its bearings. All contact is lost. Without its protective shield, the satellite is now exposed to a direct hit from the blast. Killer electrons bombard vulnerable circuit boards. Building up a dangerous charge, the satellite is literally fried. But the greatest impact might be felt on Earth. A solar burst could silence radio communications, leaving the military open to attack. Planes flying at high latitudes might be bombarded with radiation, exposing passengers to the equivalent of a hundred chest x-rays. Pilots could lose radio contact with air traffic control, and with thousands of planes in the air at one time, the results could be deadly. With weather satellites out of commission, hurricanes wouldn't be seen coming. Our busiest cities might suffer the worst effects of the solar storm. ATMs could crash, pagers go silent, long distance phone calls become impossible, and perhaps the ultimate nightmare comes to pass. Your cell phone goes dead. Today, we get only a one-hour warning before a solar blast strikes Earth. Can we do better? An answer may lie in our own backyard. Now here, we have to fiddle with this box. And we find a ghost to end there. A boy playing with rockets may not be our solution to solar science, but not every kid has a rocket scientist for a mom. Three, two, one, zero, ignition. Lika Guhatakorta is program scientist of one of NASA's most ambitious solar expeditions. Scheduled for launch in 2004, the stereo mission will send twin spacecraft to view the sun from two different vantage points. 